Hi, I'm Brian from iWire. Engine's out, but before we did that, we did the wiring, so check that out, the part we're best at. When doing a harness merge, we surgically take apart the harness from the chassis as well as the body harness that matches the engine. We then wire them together to get the benefit of the new, more powerful engine in the car while still keeping the creature comforts from the original chassis. Here, Brian is stripping the STI body harness that we will be utilizing for this project. So we have here our STI harness and our RS harness that we're going to merge together. Obviously, in order to make an engine swap work, we've got to run the new ECU in the old car. So that's what this spaghetti monster is all about. we want to make sure we mention while doing the wiring part of this swap is the fact that Subaru made the mechanical side pretty straightforward. There's always some nuance to it, but a lot of people call them like Legos. Where the tricky part comes in from swapping a new engine into another car is the wiring. There's no reason to bolt in the engine into the new chassis if when you plug it all in, it's not going to work. So we highly recommend looking into the wiring at the start of the merge. I mean, I know we're a little bit biased as a wiring company, but the sooner you sort out the electrical part, the sooner the car will be running because like if you put in that new engine and that new ECU doesn't plug into the old harness, the car is never going to start. So definitely look into the wiring before getting too far into the project. And even if the ECU plugs into the new harness, the pinouts probably don't match. Subaru uses a four plug ECU for pretty much everything after 2004, whether it's six cylinder, four cylinder turbo, four cylinder non-turbo. It looks the same, but trust us, they're not pinned the same. So don't yeah, try it. We get that one a lot. They're <laughs> not pinned the same most yeah. of the time. <laughs> So where are we at now? Uh, first half is done. So now we are doing the hard part. First part's easy, basically match same to same. Second more it part is more complex because we need to add in all of the things that don't exist. So things like a mobilizer, secondary air pump system, drive-by-wire cruise control, we'll add in things like DCCD, um, relays for the AC so the trigger is correct, and a bunch of other things. So. This is where the real sort of complexity and figuring stuff out comes. So what makes this harder than a regular merge? What's, why is using such a new engine more difficult from a wiring standpoint? From a basic sense, they're actually pretty similar, but the complexity comes in the additional features like CAN bus. Um, we need to put a CAN bus emulator on here so that it can keep the ECU happy. We also need to add in some uh, immobilizer stuff that's a little bit different but all of that will still be working and function like it should. So the mobilizer system is, we're not getting around the mobilizer system, system for using it. Um, and then adding in extra relays for the secondary air pump. A lot of that stuff exists on some of the cars, but most people don't use it because they don't have emissions where they live. We do here in California, so we're gonna make sure all the parts are in there so it can get through bar. So this pair of twisted wires is known as CAN wiring. Now this is only present in newer cars. I mean, it started in 05 with Legacy GT and Outback, but yeah. as car features got more advanced, the Subaru started adding in CAN wires. And these make it a little bit tricky when you're doing a swap, because instead of having all of these wires, everything, different inputs for one wire for each thing, 
you're getting all these digital signals on these two wires. So if you take out the two wires or it's not getting the right digital signals, the car is not gonna work properly. Yeah, it, it basically two wires replaces a single input or output for many different things. So you're sending a ton of information down these two little wires, um, but it means that you need an electronic box to pick up the signal and figure out what it means and then what to do. So when you factor that part in, the ECU is looking for information on these wires. If you don't have them hooked up and sending information to the ECU, it's just not gonna work. Right. So just another thing to think about when you decide to do a project. So if you're looking at that 18 WRX engine to put in your 99 chassis, CAN wires are gonna be something you need to figure out as well as all the other wiring pieces. Yep. 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 This is the finished harness. On the left side is the wiring for the GC-Dash and on the right side is all the wiring for the new STI engine.